It's a good training ground for it. Xavier has faced top teams before taking UMass last season to the wire. X is up-tempo, always well-coached, and deserve the respect they've earned for building such a reputation. Our new guys in particular are going to be surprised with the intensity level that they're going to bring at us. And they've got great quickness. I don't think that we'll play a quicker team all year. High-flying action next, UCX. Here we go. University of Cincinnati Bearcat Basketball is brought to you in part by Tri-State Quality Ford Dealers with five of America's top ten selling vehicles. When you've got the great taste of an ice-cold Miller Lite, life is good. Provident Bank, we provide answers. Your Cincinnati Midas Auto Systems experts. And All About Sports, we cover the Bearcat fans. 13,176. That's a sellout crowd at the Shoemaker Center. The Crosstown Shootout is set to get started. The Xavier Musketeers taking on the number one ranked Cincinnati Bearcats. And a pleasant good evening, everybody. I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome to the shoot. You know, in years past, when the schedules would first come out, most fans would scan the month of January to find the exact date of this battle. But looking at this year's schedule, it didn't take long to find the game. Week number two, the earliest Dan Hoard these teams have ever met. Is that an advantage or a disadvantage for Xavier? Well, you don't give me much room to weasel out of it by phrasing it that way, but if I have to pick one or the other, I'll say it is an advantage for Xavier, and here's why. The Muskies are only working in two significant players for a lot of minutes that weren't there last year. Cincinnati is working in three, so from the experience factor, Xavier benefits a little bit. Secondly, Skip Prosser said after the opener that Xavier had to practice extra hard in the preseason because they began with two top-notch opponents in Western Kentucky and Cincinnati. He says our team is better set for the start of the season since it was when we opened against Louisville. And they won that game against Louisville. They're hoping they can pull off another upset tonight. Well, they're also hoping they can find a way to slow down Cincinnati's All-American Danny Fortson. He had a big opening night, and we know about the game last year. Well, he killed Xavier last year. 40 points and 17 rebounds in last year's Crosstown shootout. Both career highs for Danny Fortson. Skip Prosser tried a lot of things in that ball game none of them work we'll see if he finds anything that works tonight well it's coming up we've been waiting not as long this year as in recent years but Cincinnati and X are set to tee it up in the crosstown shootout stay right here on Fox 19 for the tip off Tri-State Quality Ford dealer where there's more to a New York, number 32, Darnell Williams. <laughs> At center, a 6'8 junior from Fresno, California, number 50, Corey Braggs. <laughs> At guard, a 6'2 sophomore from Wilmington, Delaware, number 4, Lenny Brown. Also at guard, a 6'2 sophomore from Newcastle, Delaware, number 12, Gary Lumpkin. And the head coach is Skip Prosser. And now, the starting lineup for the University of Cincinnati Bearcats. Forward, a 6'7 junior from Cleveland, Ohio, number 23, Ruben Patterson. Also at forward, a 6'7 junior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, number 25, Danny Fortson. At center, a 6'9 junior from Grayson, Kentucky, number 40, Jackson. Jolson. At guard, a 6'5 senior from Cincinnati, Ohio, number three, Damon Flynn. Also in guard, a 6'1 junior from Los Angeles, California, number 20, Charles Williams. 
A change in the starting lineup from game one for Cincinnati as Charles Williams moves into the starting lineup. We imagine that might happen at some point this season. We did not suspect it would happen as early as the second game of the 96-97 campaign. Williams did put eight points on the board in the season opener. We take a first look at Xavier's starting lineup. Three freshmen that started last year are in there as sophomores. Williams, Brown, and Lumpkin. They all averaged in double figures as freshmen. That is very unusual. And the Cincinnati starting lineup, the key guy that we'll focus on at the beginning, Charles Williams at the bottom of the screen, making his first ever start as a Bearcat. All right, opening tip off right around the corner. Xavier and Cincinnati from the shoe. Stay with us. of these two teams. The Bearcats hold a 43-20 lead in the all-time series, though the Bearcats just 9-8 and eight over the last 17. UC has won five of the last seven. Skip Prossard has not beaten Cincinnati in two tries as the ex-head man. UC controls the opening tip. Charles Williams is in the starting lineup. Patterson had it blocked. And lost out of bounds to Xavier. Xavier opens man-to-man -man with T.J. Johnson guarding Danny Forts, and he fouled out trying to do that last year. Well, T.J. certainly loaded at 6'7", 250. Forts in 6'7", 260. Williams' offensive foul. That's a big one out of the gate. Skip Prosser will not be happy about that, but he'll be delighted with how easily his young guards handled the full court press. Xavier got the ball up with no trouble whatsoever. Williams a huge game against Cincinnati last season when he had 24 points. Cincinnati in the home white. As you see, the number one ranked team in the nation. Now the two major polls. Patterson had it blocked underneath. Terrific play made by Williams. T.J. Johnson, good position on Fortson, and was fouled not by Fortson, but Jackson Julson. That foul was almost Fortson's fault, though. He let Johnson get inside position. Danny needed help. Jackson Julson provided it and got picked uh, hit properly with the foul. He was guilty. That's a layup without Julson's help. T.J. Johnson, nine points, nine rebounds, a career-high eight assists in the opening game win against Western Kentucky. This is his first free throw try. A season ago, a 66% foul shooter. Xavier has an excellent free throw shooting team. Johnson hit 67%, as you mentioned, last year and was the worst free throw shooter in the starting lineup. Whistle under the basket. And perhaps just a warning, Torre Braggs and Jackson Jolson got tangled up. Danny Fortson giving us a smile over here saying, come on now. Not this early. And apparently Braggs crossed over the baseline and he's getting a warning. If he does it again, it's a technical foul. John Clockery, the official that made the call, definitely the kind of official that likes to establish the tone right from the start of the game. He'll call an early foul if he has to, to send a message and keep the play clean. Flint passed up an open three, so too does Jolson. They get it down into Fortson. Missed. Jolson missed the dunk follow, and here comes X the other way, Lenny Brown. Dishes off, and good recovery by Fortson to slap it away. Danny Fortson missed a shot he does not miss very often, about four feet away in the paint. T.J. Johnson can't let him get the ball that close to the basket, or Fortson will have another huge game against the Muskies. Here's Xavier coming the other way, and a good hustle to get back by Cincinnati. And quickly, the inbounds, a jumper hit by Lenny Brown. The top scorer is a freshman for the Musketeers a season ago. The only other freshman in X history to pull that off, Byron Larkin, who led the school in scoring all four of his years at, at X. Xavier defensively pitching a shutout through the first minute and a half. Fordson spins into the lane. That might be offensive. Nope, they say walk. Bearcats slow to get started. Little shuffling of the feet in the paint by Fortson. And that time, Xavier pushed him a little bit further away from the basket. If he gets it closer to the foul line, you've got a chance. Lenny Brown pulls up, had it blocked by Damon Flint. Braggs was out of bounds. 
Brack should let it go. Bragg's coming off a tremendous debut as a muskie with 22 points. Hey, he didn't miss a shot. Yeah, he, he was nine for nine from the field, although he did miss several free throws. He was four of nine from the line. I mean, you're going pretty good. College debut hit nine out of nine. Not bad. As Skip put it, most of those shots were downhill. A lot of dunks and layups. Two minutes have gone by. Xavier leads 3-0. Fortson down low. Got it up there. They say he walked. The basket will not count. Third turnover on Cincinnati, and Danny Fortson has been responsible for the last two. to pitch it back outside. Patterson forces a takeaway. Williams finds Flint. And he'll pull up for three. Short. Patterson tipped it. UC can't find a handle on a rebound. Three Cincinnati players had a shot at that offensive board, and none of the three were able to pull it down. Johnson a lob to Bragg. Good position. Out of bounds. UC ball. Fordson blocking that ball straight down managed to bounce it off Bragg's foot. It was unintentional, but it paid off for Cincinnati. Bragg's out of control a little bit here. He didn't know where he was when he went up for that shot, and Fordson again bounced it off his foot. UC has to spend a timeout. Terrific defensive pressure by Darnell Williams guarding Damon Flint. Both of these teams like to apply full court pressure. Cincinnati's is nationally known. Bob Huggins' amoeba defense, it's been nicknamed. But so far tonight, Xavier's full court pressure has been more effective. It hasn't forced turnovers, but it has gotten Cincinnati a little bit out of its rhythm. And this is a 20-second timeout spent by the Bearcats, who just can't seem to get it going. They've had a couple of baskets by Fortson, but both wiped away on traveling calls. Charles Williams getting the start at the point. His job, obviously, is to get Cincinnati into its offense. They have been able to get the ball down to low to Danny Fortson a couple of times, and we are certainly not accustomed to see him traveling. Doesn't happen very often, but it's happened twice in the first three minutes tonight. We got a hole. And a whistle far away at the other end of the floor, and it's a holding call that will go against Gary Lumpkin, his first foul, and the team's second. Senior Darnell Burton out of Lexington, Kentucky, will quickly enter the game, replacing Charles Williams. Meaning Flint shifts to point guard, and Darnell Burton is the shooting guard. And he had a big night in the opener, hitting five three-pointers. Of course, he had five threes in the win over Xavier last year. Four pass by Patterson. X the other way. Williams from six feet, not there. And here comes Flint. Up top. Fortson went and got it. And sticks it in. Finally, the first Cincinnati basket. I'm not so sure that pass from Flint wasn't intended for Patterson. Patterson jumped like it was an alley-oop. And Fortson caught it first and put it in. Braggs beats Fortson along the baseline. Torrey Braggs. Junior college transfer from San Jose City College. Nice move there. He has 45 fewer pounds than Danny Fortson, and that means a bit of a quickness advantage. Patterson at the other end answer. And here comes X. Lumpkin out of control, but got hacked on the arm by Burton. His first. And for the Bearcats, a team second. Bob Huggins says Xavier might be the quickest team Cincinnati faces all year. He hopes it is, because this Xavier team, particularly the guards, has loads of quickness. On the other hand, Cincinnati might be the thickest team in terms of bulk and muscle that Xavier will face all year. Flint to the bench. Williams checks back in. Off the screen, Lenny Brown was fouled, and he'll go to the line. That's Jackson Jolson again, I believe, trying to help out one of his teammates defensively. That's his second, and that will mean a quick trip to the bench. Well, Jolson did next to nothing in the opener against Western Carolina. Played a grand total of 14 minutes, didn't score. So Bobby Brandon will check in. 
and foul trouble plagued him in the opener as well. He had four fouls in 14 minutes, and in addition to not scoring, only had a couple of rebounds. Gary Lumpkin misses. So X right out of the gate, one of three from the line. Or pardon me, Lenny Brown, I'm sorry. Lumpkin coming over to have a quick word with Skip Prosser. Brown hits one of two, and the Xavier lead is 6-4. And Xavier takes off the press. Now they change it a little bit to more of a trap in the corners. And they force a takeaway, and then Johnson throws it away. Xavier did a lot of that in the opening game against Western Kentucky. I believe they forced 26 turnovers but committed 23, so they would steal the ball and in some instances give it right back. Cincinnati's already turned it over. You saw five times. X sets their third. Fortson, head fake, goes up strong and got hammered by Braggs. Well, Danny Fortson, just a junior and already fourth as far as free throw attempts are concerned in Cincinnati history. And he's two games into his junior season. Like every other record, a fellow named Robertson owns it. Wouldn't be surprised to see him lead the nation in free throws attempted this year. Nearly 300 put up last year. Now Fortson last season is a 75% free throw shooter. Misses his first try tonight. And missed them both. Patterson up strong. Second bucket for Reuben Patterson. He had 13 in his debut. Brown right wing. Into Johnson guarded by Burton. There's a mismatch. And Johnson can't do anything about it. Patterson wide open at the other end. Look out, boys. Two Cincinnati players gambled there that someone would pull down the defensive board, and it paid off. T.J. Johnson, a vicious foul, trying to set a screen and just threw a forearm into Darnell Burton, and he got whistled for the foul. Cincinnati owns a two-point lead, thanks to Reuben Patterson. Concerned about his team's rebounding capabilities, at least a couple of his players aren't. They take off for the other end as the shot goes up. Brandon pulls down the board, gets it to Williams, and look at the two guys who immediately headed the opposite way. Patterson and Fortson, with Reuben Patterson getting the slam. It's a 6-1 to one Cincinnati run over the last minute, and after missing their first four shots, the Bearcats have made their last four. Charles Williams got the start at point guard for Cincinnati. Darnell Burton, like he did last season, the Conference USA Sixth Man of the Year coming off the bench. Ruben just working isolation, and Williams, another tremendous block down low. Boy, Williams getting after it defensively. Ruben Patterson is two inches taller than Williams. Cincinnati obviously thinks that Ruben can post up Darnell Williams, but so far he has used his leaping ability to twice come up with blocks. Brandon, good head fake. May have gotten away with a walk. Fortson, look and go get it. He'll go to the line. Cincinnati is attacking the offensive glass. They did it in the opener against the Catamounts of Western Carolina, coming up with as many offensive boards as Western Carolina had rebounds, period. This has been a recurring theme and will be all season. A shot goes up, and two, three, maybe four Bearcats will crash that uh, offensive glass and Fortson is 0 for 3 from the line tonight Braggs looking for help got it along the baseline and a good feed by Lumpkin they're looking for the lob to Bragg they try to bounce it in and it belongs to Xavier last touch by Fortson 12 on the shot clock 
Fortson was playing behind Braggs early, letting him catch the ball and then trying to stop him. The Cincinnati coaches have switched that strategy, and he went out to front Braggs, trying to prevent him from getting the ball down low. Damon Flynn back in for UC. T.J. Johnson returns for Xavier. Shot clock at 7. And Johnson's going to have to put it up. Nope, he'll pitch it back outside. Lenny Brown. I don't think he knows how much time's left. And then he'll get a shot off. Boy, poor, poor execution there by Xavier. Lenny Brown got the ball back at the three-point line with four seconds left on the shot clock. He should have launched it immediately. He's a good three-point shooter. Oh, I should say he is. Lumpkin, the main man from a season ago, and he shot 40% from three-point range, but Brown, 33% a season ago. Fortson wants it and has it. Spin move, jump hook. Oh, oh, oh. Boy, is that sweet. That's an NBA move by Danny Fortson. One hand jump hook. Brown in amongst the trees pulls up for the jumper and knocks it through. He has four. 12 8 Cincinnati, 13 45 left. Too strong. And a rebound ripped out of there by Braggs. Lumpkin pushes the other way. Brown thought about it. Picks up his dribble. Now 17 on the shot clock. Braggs from 17. And he drew a foul on Darnell Burton. And that's already number two on the senior from Lexington. That's a big one. Cincinnati picking up fouls when players try to help teammates. The effort is good, trying to help out guys, but sometimes in attempting to leap in and try and block someone else's man, try to prevent them from getting off a clean shot, Cincinnati's getting arms instead of the ball. Reuben Patterson, Six points in the game will replace Darnell Burton, who sits down with two fouls and 13 10 remaining here in the opening half. Bragg's now with three in the game and checking in for the first time the left-hander Sherwin Anderson a senior out of Brooklyn New York one of the Xavier tri captains mm -hmm. and off to a good start this season if you include their two exhibition games he's had 20 assists and only three turnovers Rags rattles it in two-point game Cincinnati in front and again the pressure from X also checking in for the first time, James Posey, a sophomore out of Twinsburg, Ohio, former Division II Ohio Player of the Year back in 95, set out last season just to concentrate on academics. He's number 41. Cincinnati needs Flint to start making shots. Not there. Lenny Brown, no good. Anderson able to save it, get the rebound. And a fresh 35, and then they turn it over. Well, Anderson just out of control right there. Yeah, and that is precisely what he had not been doing so far this season. We saw too much of that out of Anderson last year and meant a lot of pine time. Well, Xavier daring Cincinnati to shoot from the outside. When Fortson gets it, he got hammered, no call. But the Bearcats have not hit a shot from outside of five feet yet in this game. Patterson and Fortson accounting for all 12 Cincinnati points, all down low. And Patterson will add to it. Patterson has been blocked twice in this game. There was no way he was going to have that shot blocked as he elevated way up and over two defenders trying to deny him. Braggs and Johnson tried to get there, and Patterson just soared to score. Oh, 
And that is a big foul for T.J. Johnson. That's a uh, lane violation, but it went in, so it will count. The lane violation was against X. So give Patterson now his ninth point of the game, and we have a timeout on the floor. 11.58 to play in the opening half. And Cincinnati leads Xavier 15-10. And yes, we will indeed now take a timeout. The Bearcats to help children with arthritis through the Gift of Hope Challenge. Every time a Bearcat player makes a free throw, Provident Bank will donate $50 to the Gift of Hope, which provides programs and services to benefit children with arthritis throughout southwestern Ohio and northern Kentucky. Bearcats only one of four from the line here in the early going. Turnovers are about even so far. Six for Xavier, five for Cincinnati, but points off turnovers are benefiting the Bearcats. Fifteen uh, total points for Cincinnati, nine off turnovers. Nice reverse layup by Posey, his first basket of the game. getting the last bucket underneath. So the Muskies with a three have a chance to tie this up. They break the pressure and then a foul in the backcourt will go against Charles Williams. That'll be his first. And for Cincinnati, that will be the team's fifth. And the full court pressure by the Bearcats is not rattling Xavier at all. Now they're just running right through it. Mm -hmm. Lumpkin for three. Short. Fortson with a rebound. And he's tied up. Possession arrow gives it back to Xavier. <laughs> game both a little sloppy early on Danny absolutely a lot of bumping underneath some players going down as Danny Fortson just did and a little bit of talking going back and forth right now Danny Fortson's having a few friendly words with Braggs of Xavier boy X Miss Posey around the screen wanted a travel call there no foul a lot of contact on the floor bodies everywhere and Flint has a basketball and a good job by Braggs to slow up Flint and prevent a Cincinnati fast break. Braggs very athletic for a big guy, 6'8", 220. So is Posey for that matter. He's considerably thinner. Patterson for three, in and out. Fortson caught it, went up for the stick back and can't get it. And then a reach-in foul will go against Danny Fortson. Boy, serious elbows flying around underneath Terrence Payne after getting that rebound, just checking in. Danny Fortson continues to get offensive rebounds, but he's missing shots. He typically doesn't miss. That's his first foul of this game. Early in the game, Xavier was getting the ball to whatever man Fortson was covering, obviously in hopes that they could force Danny to pick up some fouls. Oddly enough, it comes on the other end of the court when he finally picks up his first. 10.30 to play, opening half of the Shoemaker Center. Bearcats in front, 15-12. Lumpkin, an open three, and rattles it in to tie the game. Lumpkin, his first basket of the evening. Damon Flint chasing the smaller, quicker Lumpkin. He got lost in a screen, and Lumpkin took advantage, bearing the open three. Well, Bob Huggins has to be very concerned about his outside shooting at this point. There's a takeaway by Anderson. Behind the back feed to Posey. And that was a case where the behind-the-back pass wasn't flashy. It benefited Sherwin Anderson to throw that pass because he drew defensive, uh, drew a defensive player to him first. Bodies all over the place. And the ball belongs to Cincinnati. Baker getting sloppy with the ball. Xavier should have just been charged with a technical foul coming off the bench. You saw how Anderson made it look like he was going to go up for the shot before making the behind-the-back pass. That's when it's useful. It's not just for applause here. 
There was a purpose to it, and it led to the easy bucket for James Posey. Well, Dewan Baker checking in. Bob Huggins hoping that Baker can find the range from outside. Flint has not hit a bucket, neither is Burton. The only two Bearcats to score are Fortson and Patterson. Flint will try it again, and still not there. And a foul underneath against Cincinnati. If Cincinnati can't hit a few outside shots, Xavier can collapse its defense around Danny Fortson and have a chance. The Muskies tried to do that last year. Burton hit five three-pointers. Flint hit three three-pointers. It's a little bit reminiscent of the Mississippi State game that ended Cincinnati's season in that Damon Flint could not hit a shot in that game, and Mississippi State was able to take advantage by collapsing in the middle. Bobby Brandon whistle for the foul. That's a seventh team foul by the Bearcats in this half, so they'll walk the other end. Roderick Monroe checks in for Cincinnati. And Danny Fortson takes a seat for the first time tonight. And he's getting an earful right now from Bob Huggins about holding the ball there a moment ago and having it stripped away from him. Braggs, two of two from the line tonight. Make it three of three. The lecture continues. The in and both. Bragg's playing in his first crosstown shootout. Doesn't appear to be rattled at all. Nine straight points for Xavier. And another musketeer takeaway. Anderson to the bucket. Missed it. Posey the rebound. Back up strong. Easy pass by Flint, leading to the interception by Anderson. And X's lead is all of a sudden up to six. Patterson dumps it off. Offensive foul against Reuben Patterson. Great job by Terrence Payne, drawing the offensive foul from Patterson. His first foul in the game, and Patterson, the kind of guy who's not going to give you a lot of stats, has to make plays like that to contribute. That was a bad pass by Flint. He telegraphed it and didn't put much on the throw. Anderson is quick. And Posey looks like a keeper. He's going to be a good one here. Another Xavier sophomore. Charles Williams and Darnell Burton with two fouls in the game already. Check back in for the Bearcats, and Fortson's going to come back in a moment. Off the screen, Lumpkin for three. Not there, and Burton the rebound. Bearcats need a bucket bad, trailing by six. Fortson getting ready to check back in. Williams pulls up, not there, and not a good shot. And I think Braggs was out of bounds when he had the rebound. So Cincinnati ball, and as Dan pointed out, Dan Fortson will come back in. Bobby Brandon sits. Damon Flynn returns for the Bearcats. Reuben Patterson will head for the bench. Bob trying to find a combination and get something going offensively and defensively right now. And in this lineup, six foot four inch Rod McRun from Monroe is the center. Flynn forced it. Take away. Braggs, one man to beat and can't do it, but he does get the ball. Thrown into the air. And that's up on top of the backboard, Cincinnati ball. Things just wild here at the Shoemaker Center. Well, this helps both teams steal stats, I think. <laughs> Payne had a man open, Posey, on the uh, low post when he did that head fake. If he had made a little bounce pass, Xavier would have had an easy bucket. Easier said than done when you have Danny Fordson in between. Look at Braggs defending 25 feet away from the basket, and he's whistled for the foul. That'll be his second, and for Xavier, they're seven. So the Bearcats will now head for the line for a one and one. And right back in, T.J. Johnson, like Burton, he too has two fouls. And Braggs with two sits down. 
Braggs has played very well so far. He has eight points in the game. He's pulled down a couple of rebounds. Skip Prosser has a saying that you win with men, not kids. And one look at Torrey Braggs, you know that guy is a man. A junior college transfer from California. Grew up near Fresno, and he is going to help the Xavier program for the next couple of years. 15 feet is still the longest distance, and Bearcats have hit a shot from tonight. And they both come on free throws. One by Patterson, the other by Williams. UC has missed all four of its three-point attempts in this game. Lumpkin will chase down the rebound. Xavier in front. 21-16. Lumpkin offensive foul. But Lumpkin just getting a little out of control, Danny, a couple of times tonight. That was understandable last year when he started as a freshman and really hadn't played the point before. Skip Prosser will be less tolerant of that now that Lumpkin has experience as a sophomore. Shooting Cincinnati 44% to 35% so far. Each team has made seven shots from the field, but Xavier has four fewer attempts, and X is on an 11 to 1 run over the last six minutes. Cincinnati having a tough time dealing with the pressure the last few minutes. They just missed Monroe wide open under the basket. And turnover again by the Bearcats as Burton lost a handle. And it's the senior guards for Bob Huggins who have been coughing up the ball early. Flint and Burton. Ten turnovers already for Cincinnati. Brown off the screen. Too strong for three, but there's Posey for the rebound. And a fresh 35 for the Muskies. Posey left baseline. Nothing but air. a case where Williams forced the pass. And Bob Huggins just standing hands on hips wondering can anybody play guard for us tonight? Lumpkin an open three. His shot off tonight. Big rebound by Payne. And Monroe will be Whistle for a foul underneath. Xavier's last two three-point attempts, one by Brown, one by Lumpkin, I guess there was also another one by Posey during that stretch, make it all three three-point attempts were uncontested. They missed all three, so Cincinnati doesn't worry about it for the moment. But if you shoot them with no one nearby, eventually they'll start going down, and that would be a big problem for Cincinnati. Payne a sophomore out of Baltimore, Maryland. Get into the line for the first time tonight. And he'll get the back end after making the front end of the one and one. Temperatures rising in the shoe for Bob Huggins. He just slammed his palm against the floor. Well, the Cincinnati guard play tonight has been brutal, and that's being kind. Xavier's largest lead of the game is at 7, 23, 16. Flint to the bucket and draws a foul. Maybe that'll get Damon Flint started. Mm -hmm. Better job by Cincinnati at that time breaking the full court pressure, and they did it without dribbling much. They moved the ball through the air instead of on the floor. That is a third foul against the junior T.J. Johnson. And he will have to go to the Xavier bench. Another very disappointing crosstown shootout for Johnson, who fouled out, as Dan mentioned, in last year's game after doing close to nothing. Replacing him in the lineup for X, Kevin Carr, an inspirational story as he has come back from knee surgery in June. Wasn't expected to be back until January, December at the earliest, and here he is in the second game of the season. Good for him. His first practice with his teammates was Sunday. Flint hit them both. And that's his two first two points of the game. Bounce 
Bounce pass into Posey. Isolation post up on Burton. And came up short. And then a foul will be whistled against Xavier. And it's on Kevin Carr. At times, he can get a little bit out of control. He's such an aggressive player that he'll go after the ball at all costs. And from time to time, got into early foul trouble last year. He was really the only big guy for Xavier at times last season. And Skip Prosser has to be delighted to have him back so early this year. So Cincinnati will walk to the other end of the floor. That is Xavier's 10th team foul. So Fortson will shoot a pair. Danny 0 for 3 from the line in the game tonight. And he finally hits on his fourth try. Seven points now for Danny, who had 40, along with 17 rebounds in the victory over the Musketeers last year at the Gardens. And he hit them both. So the lead, what was seven, now down to three at the 6.05 mark. Great hustle by Monroe. Didn't get the steal, but didn't miss by much. And a foul away from the ball. And if that's 33, they signal. No, they're saying 44. It will be against Roderick Monroe. That's his second. And Xavier will head to the line as Patterson comes back into the game, replacing Charles Williams. James Posey about to head to the line for Xavier. Posey missed last year. He was academically ineligible and said it was torture to watch the game against Massachusetts last year when UMass was ranked number one and came into the gardens. That made this game extra special for him, getting the opportunity so quickly into his first year as an eligible college player to face the top-ranked team in the country. How about that? Bearcats without a field goal in nearly 12 minutes. And yet they're only four down. If you're Xavier, that has to concern you. And there's a silly foul by Lenny Brown, his first, and Flint will go to the line to shoot two. Boy, if Xavier doesn't commit some of these fouls, they have a chance to be up by 12, 14, 16 points right now. And Skip Prosser is calling all five of his players over for a little conference, and I would imagine that is the subject of his uh, lecture. Well, each team is in the double bonus for their final 541 of this opening half. Flynn needing three more points to move into the 33rd slot on the Cincinnati all-time scoring list. Of course, Cincinnati with three players already career over 1,000 points in Flint. Burton, who's been shut out in the game tonight, and Danny Fortson. Damon now 4 of 4 from the line. Lead down to 2. And Xavier says timeout. 20 second timeout. Well, what do you think Skip's having to say to the troops right about Dan? Now, Dan, they got to feel pretty good about things. Well, I'm sure he feels good about the lead. I think he made a good point in talking about how the fouls that Xavier has committed have really been of the silly variety, and that's one thing that Skip might be mentioning in this timeout. You'll frequently see when Skip calls a timeout, he will gather his assistant coaches, have a little session with them before he talks to his players, but in this case, he called the 22nd timeout and immediately knew the message he wanted to impart to his players. Well, the officials have been busy tonight. Lots of bumping underneath the basket, away from the ball. 5.35 to play in the first half, and Cincinnati goes to his zone. First time we've seen it out of the Bearcats tonight. And a three. No, they're saying a two-pointer outside by Williams. It had the arc of a three-pointer. That was a ceiling scratcher from Williams as he got it over the outstretched hand of Damon Flynn. And for Darnell Williams, his first basket of the game. Cincinnati breaking the pressure, and Fortson's going to the hole. Pulls up, got it. 
Kevin Carr played that well, got in between Fortson in the basket, and put his arms straight up to avoid a foul. Danny just made a good shot. Brown for three. Yes, sir. So Cincinnati goes to the zone defense, and Xavier hits a couple of outside jumpers. Williams and now Brown. That could mean a quick end to the zone. X in front, 29-24. Xavier did not win a game, excuse me, Danny, last year against top 25 opponents. They went 0 5. Monroe, a little jump hook, and we'll get the roll. Home court roll for Rod Monroe. He spends a lot of time after every Cincinnati practice working on his shooting with assistant coach Larry Harrison, and perhaps that bounce uh, can be attributed to the hard work and the extra work he's put in. And the Bearcats stay in the zone defense. Brown thought about the lob. Thought better of it. Lumpkin try to get it to Carr and Patterson the takeaway. Force a pass to David Flynn. And the Bearcats miss a fast break opportunity. Timeout on the floor. The Musketeers have come to the shoe and with 3.35 left in the half, lead the Bearcats by three. Yeah, Monroe, Fortson, and Patterson. Cross-court pass. Lenny Brown spots up in and out. Fortson rips away the rebound. Rebound number five for Danny. Closing in on the three-minute mark. Burton throws it away. Boy, this is getting pitiful. In tennis, that would be called an unforced error. There was no reason for that ball to be thrown away. No intense pressure in Burton's face. Just a bad pass. 13th Cincinnati turnover here in the first 17 minutes and 10 seconds. Carr getting some minutes due to the foul trouble of Johnson and Braggs. Johnson has three. Braggs with a pair. Way downtown. In and out by Williams. Forts in the rebound. Cincinnati looks to push ahead. Flint thought about giving it up and then lost his footing in travel. Well, our forward game summary. Team's identical shooting, but how about the turnovers, Danny? 13 for Cincinnati, only nine for X. Last year, Xavier had more turnovers than assists, and it's been a bigger problem for the Bearcats so far tonight. Danny Forts in helping keep Cincinnati in this game with 10 points, and we can add one rebound to that. He's up to six. Charles Williams comes into the game. Good feed in the car, a lot of contact, tipped in by Posey. Nice left hand by James Posey. He has seven points. He was a 6-2 guard as a high school sophomore and shot up his last two years to his current 6-7. Williams splits the defense. And a reach-in foul. That'll be against Lenny Brown, his second. And now all five Xavier starters have two or more fouls. Williams with two, Braggs with two, Brown with two, Lumpkin with two, and T.J. Johnson with three. Wow. Damon Flint sits down, and Melvin Lovett, the sophomore, and the crowd igniter out of Cleveland, Ohio, Euclid Senior High School, comes in for the first time. Williams, one of two from the line in the game tonight. Williams rated as a number two junior college point guard in America by Athlon magazine and we'll see if he eventually does indeed become the regular starter. He got his first start for UC tonight and he's one guy in this ball club that knows what it's like to be ranked number one. His junior college team was to start last year and then did not finish the year number one. So he, he obviously would like a different ending in his first year at UC. 
Great feed into Posey. Fortson blocked it. X wanted a foul underneath. Didn't get it. Williams to the bucket. And he draws a foul. And if that's on Brown, that's his third. And it is. Sherwin Anderson will come right back into the ball game, and Skip Prosser is hot, and I would say understandably hot. There was certainly just as much contact under the hoop when X had the ball as there was on that drive by Charles Williams. Although in fairness to the officials, if there was contact there, it might have been initiated by the man with the ball, James Posey. Williams misses so again if you're just tuning in Xavier already in big time foul trouble in this one TJ Johnson with three Lenny Brown with three Braggs with two Lumpkin with two talking four of the five starters with two or more as Williams hits one of two from the line and a lead is two for Xavier. Had an outstanding first half, although he just walked. Well, you got to be impressed, though, with Posey. Certainly do. He played great in the opening game against Western Kentucky with 20 points in 22 minutes. We see that Cincinnati has stayed in the 2 3 zone in the half court defense, and it has gotten a, quite a bit better. Xavier got off two easy shots the first two possessions against the zone, but they have been much more difficult to come by since. 1 11 left until halftime. And the Musketeers on the road leading Cincinnati by two. Bearcats at the minute mark have a chance to tie if not take the lead. Flint off the screen from Forts into the hole. We're tied up. And that is the first field goal in this game by a Cincinnati guard. With less than a minute to go in the half. Xavier cannot run out the clock. 13 left on the shot clock, 29 left in the half. Williams a big three, way short. And the Bearcats will hold for a final shot. And a chance to go in, which would be absolutely unbelievable considering how poorly they played in the first half. If they go into the locker room with a lead, Xavier has to be absolutely deflated. Burton will take it. Four seconds left. Offensive foul against Darnell Burton. And for Burton, that is his third foul of the game. When Xavier had the ball on offense, Skip Prosser got Terrence Davis up to come in and replace Burton so that he would not pick up his third foul. There was never a timeout. He never had the chance to get Davis into the game. And Burton picked up the third while also uh, hurting a man in the process. Well, Lumpkin is down. We'll see uh, what may have happened. Oh, his head just snapped right back onto the floor. But Burton, number three. Burton, 0 for 1 from the floor. No points. Three turnovers. One of his poorest halves in a long time. He almost went to Xavier's college choices coming out of high school in Lexington were Xavier and Cincinnati and ultimately chose the Bearcats because they were on TV more often than Xavier. Well Lumpkin still down for the Muskies. One of the three outstanding freshmen last season. And he will gingerly walk off the floor. He's still clearly shaking up. Matter of fact, I believe they're going to take him right back into the locker room. 2.6 seconds left in the half. No, he will go on the bench. He just sat down. And hopefully he's going to be all right. So the Muskies, 2.6 seconds left. Hand it right back and let her rip for Anderson from half court. Might go! And just did miss. So 31 apiece at halftime. And Skip Prosser 
One more cool drink of water before he gets back and talks to the troops. They're playing very well. Many of these guys, their first trip into this building. Xavier has never won at the shoe, and to be even at halftime certainly says a lot about what we have to look forward to in the second half. And for the Bearcats, could they have played any worse in the opening half? And yet here they are in a tie game. So we'll have a second half coming up shortly, but stay with us for plenty of halftime festivities right here at the shoe. You're watching Fox 19. Up. They didn't get a whole lot of production from uh, Lumpkin. They didn't get any to speak of. Only two points on a Darnell Williams, but a big half for Posey and a very, very big half for Lenny Brown. Indeed, and a big half in terms of forcing turnovers. They forced 15 turnovers out of Cincinnati in the first half. It's usually the other way around where the Bearcats are concerned, and we'll take a look at some of the first half highlights. This was one of few very easy shots for Cincinnati. Reuben Patterson dunking home two of his nine points. Lenny Brown answers he put in eight points for X in the first half the turnovers 15 of them and this was typical Danny Fortson giving the ball up to a guard Sherwin Anderson he makes the feed leading to the easy layup for Posey Fortson however despite losing that one ball did have a big half not only scoring 10 points for Cincinnati but coming down with a game high eight rebounds thus far neither team hit too many threes Xavier hit a couple Cincinnati no three-pointers so far and our final highlight is a basket by Damon Flint significant because it came with less than a minute to go in the half and it was the first field goal by a Cincinnati guard in the half looking at some first half statistics the turnovers jump off the page 15 for Cincinnati 10 for X Cincinnati averaged fewer than 14 turnovers per game last season the most turnovers they committed in the shoe in a single game last year was 21 that was against Louisville the only game in 14 home games mm. at Cincinnati lost at home and our trout halftime leading scores Dan mentioned Danny Fortson with 10 Brown and Braggs leading the way for the Musketeers with eight we talked about Posey coming off the bench and a sophomore out of Twinsburg Ohio with seven foul trouble certainly is a factor in particular Darnell Burton on the Cincinnati side but X in big trouble the five names you see on the Xavier side are the five starters all five with two or more fouls including Brown and Johnson with three apiece that could be very significant in the second half the final 20 minutes of the crosstown shootout coming up Cincinnati's number one ranking on the line we'll be right back Trout Dairy Premium Eggnog is rated the best eggnog in city. Opposed to the first, Bobby Brannon starts in the pivot in place of Jackson Jolson, who picked up two fouls in three minutes and 40 seconds and did not return in the first half. Lumpkin okay. He will start the second half. Took the hard knock on the back of the head when going to the floor in the final seconds. Joined by Brown, Braggs, Darnell Williams, and T.J. Johnson, the same five which started the game for the Musketeers. We'll see if Cincinnati goes after T.J. Johnson since he has three. Wow. Wow. Patterson had it stripped away and a fight for the loose ball. Brandon got it and threw it right to Lumpkin. And coast to coast Lumpkin lays it in. X in front by two. Xavier with token pressure. The first time Cincinnati had the ball, Xavier dropped into a 2-3 zone. This is often a move when you're in foul trouble to try to prevent some of your starting players from picking up more. Patterson split the defenders and ties the game. Ruben Patterson with 11. Our fourth tie of the evening. Cincinnati playing man-to-man -man in the second half, and Flint nearly picked off that pass from Braggs. Cincinnati played man-to-man -man for most of the half, went to a 2-3 zone late in the first half, and didn't look very good early, but got better as the Bearcats continued to play it. Lumpkin, the trigger man, will waltz it into Johnson. It's been a tough night for T.J. Johnson. He only has one point and three fouls. Lumpkin 
Lumpkin again beat his man to the bucket and lays it in. Two left-handed layups by Lumpkin. He is a right-handed shooter, so showing a good ability to put the floor on, put the ball on the floor with the left hand and finish the play with a left-handed shot. Of course, Brown and Lumpkin, high school teammates, William Penn High School in Delaware. And playing together here at Xavier, and the Musketeers lead by two. Flint for three. He needs one. In and out. Patterson went up and got it. Got stripped. Fortson will lay it down. And again, we're tied. 12 points, nine rebounds for Danny Fortson. Cincinnati missed another chance for a takeaway. Jump ball possession arrow gives it back to the Muskies. And now Braggs and Fortson. Bumping bodies and exchanging glances. Good job by official Larry Lembo to step between and make sure that did not get out of hand. John Clockery also running from his position to make sure that it didn't get too nasty. John's an excellent official. He's done several national championship games, and Bob Huggins certainly remembers him. I think John kicked him out of a game last mm -hmm. year. Brown, a quick free, and knocks it in. Flint missing. Flint missing the three on one end, and Brown hits it on the other. Cincinnati cannot buy an outside shot. Patterson will try to answer. Can't do it. Brandon rips away the rebound. Head fake, and he is fouled. Are they saying the basket is good? Boy, this would be a shock if they do. I thought it was going to be a travel when the whistle blew. The basket is not good. Good rebounding position by Brannon. Little shuffling of the feet. The travel could have been called. Instead, it's foul number three on Torre Braggs. Well, the two big men for Xavier, each with three, Johnson and Braggs. And they're going to go right after Braggs. Isolated on Fortson and stripped from behind. Danny got it back, lost it, and he's out of bounds. They got the ball to Fortson, guarded by Braggs. Braggs with three fouls. Johnson came in to help. He has three fouls, and they were able to pull off the double team without picking up number four. And Bob Huggins dangerously close a moment ago to drawing a technical foul. All over the officials, he felt Fortson was fouled. X leading by three with the ball. Brown again for three, and bangs it in. Lenny Brown with back-to-back -back threes. He's being guarded by Damon Burton. A Darnell Burton, excuse me, and Darnell having trouble keeping up with the tireless Lenny Brown. And Brown watches now as Burton knocks in his first long-range shot of the night. That's one way for Darnell Burton to answer, and that's Cincinnati's first three-pointer in seven tries tonight. Off the screen, Lumpkin, and he hits a three. Boy, things warming up in a hurry, and Xavier is six-point lead. Brown with back-to-back -back threes, and now Lumpkin with a three. And Burton thought about it, dishes to Brannon. Way out. Too strong, and Xavier the rebound. And in the backcourt, a technical foul has been called. T.J. Johnson and Fortson get locked up, and Johnson bumps the official twice. Well, away from the action, Johnson and Fortson got tangled up, and a technical foul was called. We do not know who was charged with a tee. Who said the Crosstown shootout has gotten too friendly? technical foul on Johnson he also gets hit with a personal foul charge which would be his fourth foul of the game and Skip Prosser is hot you may remember he benched Johnson in the first half for what should have been an intentional foul on a screen he set at midcourt and sat Johnson down for a long time to have him think about whether or not he wants to play much longer in this game and he's still upset His teammates doing everything they can to get T.J. Johnson under control. Well, 
Well, again, it was a wave from the action, so tough to see exactly what happened. Well, there's a takedown. That's what started it. Hard to see what followed, but T.J. Johnson is still visibly upset in front of the Xavier bench. One of the captains, one of his fellow captains, Sherwin Anderson, coming over, trying to calm him. Well, we're unable to hear the public address announcer, Doug Kidd, but you can certainly draw some kind of conclusion by the reaction of the crowd. Danny Fortson has been charged with a technical. Fortson in with one and Johnson with one. So technical fouls each way. And for Danny Fortson, he also gets a personal foul out of this, which would be just his second. But for TJ Johnson, that gives him, in addition to the technical, a fourth personal foul in the game. He'll come out. James Posey will come in. You can see a Xavier called upon TJ's teammates, Lumpkin and Williams, tell him to think stay in control and not get kicked out of this game. Well, I should correct myself. Now we understand, Dan, that what has happened is they have charged team fouls to Xavier and UC, but not personal fouls on Johnson or Fortson. They're just saying unsportsmanlike conduct by both teams. So T.J. Johnson still has three fouls in the game, and Danny Fortson still has one foul. So we think we've got it all straightened out. Cincinnati is going to get the basketball and TJ Johnson even without picking up personal foul number four will come out of the game as the Muskies hope to get his emotions in check well you would think Johnson a junior who has started for three seasons would be a little more under control tonight but young man out of Charlotte North Carolina and Oak Hill Academy in Virginia has not handled himself well at all Danny Fortson remains in a game for the Bearcats. Cross court to Patterson. Got himself in trouble and was cut underneath. And Posey can't believe that that foul went against him. That'll be just his first. Third team foul. And it looks like Johnson is considerably more composed than he was about four or five minutes ago. With give bounce to Patterson. He has 13. Xavier turns it over. Skip Prosser remaining cool in front of the Xavier bench and trying to communicate the same thing to his players. Don't get too upset over what happened. Keep doing what you've done for the first 24 minutes of this game. Xavier leads 44-40. 15-50 to go at the shoe. The number one team in the nation down to their arch rivals. Williams comes right back to get it, takes it to the bucket, and lays it in. Good move by Charles Williams, his first basket. Not the type of guy who typically looks for his shot, but they gave him the baseline, and he took advantage. Dump it down low to Bragg, who nearly threw it away. Good catch by Williams. And then a foul will be called. I think Patterson reached in as Williams made his move to the bucket. Patterson's second foul of the game, and the... Bearcats second of the half. And as you noted, a good catch by Darnell Williams. The sophomore had to reach up and extend the left hand to prevent that from being another musky turnover. Well, this one finally starting to get that feeling of a Cincinnati Xavier game. And we have a timeout on the floor. 15 21 to play. Bob Huggins Bearcats down by two. The officials have come over to notify us during the commercial break that 
Well, the final ruling is simply this, and then we're going to finally put this baby to rest. Rather than unsportsmanlike technicals on each player, Fortson and T.J. Johnson are indeed assessed personal fouls, so Johnson has four and Fortson has two. Hopefully we don't have to tell you about another change. Out of bounds, you see basketball. So Johnson on the bench with four. And Cincinnati starting to do a better job of challenging musky shots. Charles Williams, the point man for the Bearcats, playing in his first crosstown shootout. Melvin Levitt has checked into the game. And Reuben Patterson has taken a seat up top to Brandon. Good pass. And he's fouled underneath. And if that's on Bragg, that's number four. Let's see. A lot of bodies underneath there. Nope, they're going to get Gary Lumpkin, and that will be his third. Great pass by Williams. Did not telegraph it at all. He had the ball close to his hip, spotted Brandon, and whipped it up court. Bobby steadying himself with that dribble. Be nice if he could go up without having to put the ball on the floor. But in any case, he will go to the line to shoot, too. Brandon just a 55% free throw shooter a season ago. Nice touch there, nothing but net. Brandon certainly a mirror image of the Cincinnati team. Hard nose, scrappy, competitive sort. And he'll get a lot more playing time, it looks like, this season than he did a year ago. Hits them both, fifth tie of the game. 44 apiece. Carr will check back in, replacing Darnell Williams, who has had a very quiet night. Just three points, rather two points in the game. Wouldn't expect to see Carr for very long. He's only practiced a couple of times coming back from the knee injury, but he can give you a few minutes of hustle and a big body. Bearcats turning up the defensive pressure crowd into the game. Burden hustling out to prevent Lenny Brown from getting an open look. Dump it in a car. Big jump hook. Had it rejected. But Lumpkin gets it back. Shot clock at four. And Lumpkin will have to fire from way out. In and out. And Xavier hustles after the ball. And where is it going? You see what? Skip Prosser doesn't buy it. And he wants a timeout. Boy, Skip's upset. And, uh, yes, it is a full timeout, so we will step aside. With 14.20 left, we have a... Now they're saying it's a 20-second timeout. Skip given a chance to change his original plan and move from a full timeout to a 20. Interesting little uh, move there by Skip Prosser in the huddle that we saw as he kind of tapped Kevin Carr in the chest with a fist. Something we'd expect more out of Bob Huggins than Skip Prosser, but Skip may not have the reputation for being fiery, but don't let that uh, reputation fool you. Cincinnati has made this run with Williams and Burton in the backcourt, Levin, Fortson, and Brandon up front. We have not seen Jackson Jolson in the second half. Williams trying to get out of trouble. Dumps it off to Burton. Bearcats just do beat the 10-second line. And they have a chance to take the lead. Shot clock at 7. Somebody's going to have to fire. Down to three. And a lost out of bounds. Waiting. The officials talking with one another. And it goes to the Musketeers. Boy, not a good offensive exchange there for UC. And Bobby Brannon puts the ball on the floor with a few seconds left on the shot clock. You know it's desperation time for UC. 18th turnover of the game for the Bearcats. the screen along the baseline Brown somehow got it off Posey the rebound and Fortson whistle for the foul that's number three on Danny Danny a little frustrated that he could not pull down the defensive board and he stuck out that big left arm for an obvious third personal 
Xavier has never beaten a team ranked number one. They're 0 2, but oh, if they come close. Last season, many remember in overtime at the Gardens on the 4th of December, lost to UMass 78 74. You turn back the clock to 93 in the NCAA tournament and a loss at the RCA Dome in Indianapolis to the Indiana Hoosiers 73 70. Brown, too strong. Posey the big rebound and then had it stripped. Mel Levin with the strip. And the Bearcats want to slow things down. Not big, much firepower out there right now. Right. The big low post option is gone. They have to rely more on the perimeter players with this five -some. And Burton's going to come off the screen. Pulls up. May have had it blocked. And did. Good defensive play there by Lenny Brown. He's a great defensive player. One of the best in the Atlantic 10, if not the best, last year. Bragg stepped out of bounds. Well, they said travel first. Yep. He hopped on his pivot foot. Braggs has gotten himself caught a couple of times in this game in bad spots on the floor. Underneath the backboard, too close to the baseline. Needs to come out a step or two to have better position. Well, each team missing a chance to take the lead. We've been tied at 44 for a couple of minutes now. Williams tried to beat Posey baseline, couldn't do it. Brandon will take the shot. Wow, and hit it. Big bucket for Brandon. Eight straight points for Cincinnati to take the lead. Xavier has not scored in four minutes, and now Posey turns it over. Well, we mentioned that James Posey was a guard and a short one, relatively short one at least, at 6'2", as a high school sophomore. He has the ability at 6'7", to put it on the floor, but he took steps before his first dribble. Timeout. We'll be back. When Cannon played at Moeller High School, he showed good shooting range up to about 15 or 16 feet. He's appeared tentative shooting the jumper at Cincinnati, but he took it there and drained it. Bobby with four points, and he has gone most of the way in the second half in place of Jackson Jolson. And you see Cincinnati's first lead in quite a while. The Musketeers have not scored in the last six minutes. And yet they're only down two. And now Williams will reset the offense, pull up for the jumper, and it's off the iron. Whistle underneath, and it's a foul against Bobby Brandon. Fighting with Kevin Carr for position, and Bobby did it with his upper body, not his lower body. That'll get called every time. Second foul on Brandon, team fourth. Each team with four fouls here in the second half. And Demon Flint returns, replacing Melvin Lovett. And Cincinnati's getting some decent play while buying time on the bench for Danny Fortson with three fouls. We've not heard much from Braggs after a very fast start. There's Williams on the baseline. And Xavier... Ice cold. 6 1 Charles Williams with a defensive rebound and a great feed. Oh, to Darnell Burton. Xavier in desperate need of a bucket. And Charles Williams, while playing defense, whips the crowd into a frenzy. And a hack on the arm. Boy. Looked like he had it clean. Called on Charles Williams trying to reach in from behind and steal it from someone else's man. Here's the pass from Williams. When did he see that Darnell Burton was running the wing? It never appeared that he looked up. But he spotted him early in the play and waited for the perfect time to make the pass. The Muskies have gone six and a half minutes without a basket or without a point. And now they turn it over. And Skip Prosser realizes his team is certainly standing on the edge of the abyss. And again, that's what you can call an unforced turnover. No reason for Lenny Brown to make such a sloppy pass that his cross-court pass could not be handled. 10.34 left. Cincinnati by four.
the truck. Jesse Jackson, the unreverend Jesse on the left. Our producer director, the James Taylor lookalike, David Ashbrock in the middle. And Collins, our TD on the right, and Karen Eisenhart. Also, the whole gang here from Fox 19 bringing the UC basketball all season long. There are more cameras here than tourists yeah. at the Statue of Liberty. All the toys have been broken out tonight. Williams pulls up. Big shot for Williams. I'll tell you what, he is doing a lot, playing good defense on Lumpkin, now Anderson, on this end of the court, and igniting the offense on the other end. Xavier down six. Johnson fouled before he went up. Now let's see, they had gone 643 without a point. I don't believe the basket is going to count. Yes, it is. Wow. What a big bucket that is. Johnson back into the game for the first time since the incident with Fortson, and he immediately contributes, making the bucket as he is hacked by Rod Monroe. Bobby Brandon allowed Johnson to get good position on the low post, and Brandon's inability to prevent the ball from getting in caused the foul as much as the action by Rod Monroe. Johnson missed the free throw. I think they're going to say over the back on Braggs, and they are, and that is number four on Torrey Braggs. So four on T.J. Johnson, four on Torrey Braggs, and Braggs will come out with James Posey coming in. Well, i tell you one thing. You don't know who's going to win this game. But this Xavier team, if they're not one of the best 25 teams in America, well, then I haven't done many UC games because this is a solid team and a young team. Definitely a sleeper team, and I honestly think they will make the NCAA tournament this year. Be shocked if they didn't, Danny. Good point. But a long season. This is only game number two. Flint, head fake, and sticks it in. Great fake. Only the second field goal for Flint, and with the head fake, he got Darnell Williams up in the rafters. T.J. Johnson missed it. Boy, Johnson has had a miserable night. Johnson with a good head fake to get Flint in the rafters, but he couldn't complete the play. Cincinnati's best two players, Danny Fortson and Reuben Patterson, have been on the bench for about the last five, six minutes. And the Bearcats have made this big run. Flint again a little fade away not there and here comes Lenny Brown Cincinnati hustles back three men getting back pulled up didn't get it but Brown gets his own rebound and wide open Williams to the bucket offensive foul if you try to draw the charge often enough you'll get credit eventually even for trying the last time Monroe did that, the foul was called on him, but he's willing to go down again, and this time he draws the foul from Darnell Williams, number three on the sophomore. Johnson with four, Braggs with four, Brown, Lumpkin, and Williams with three, and Lumpkin will come back in. Reuben Patterson checking back in for Cincinnati as Darnell Burton will take a breather. Lenny Brown with 14 goes to the bench. Williams, who had a very impressive seven, eight minute run, checks out Darnell Burton back in there. And Danny Fortson still sits and waits. Patterson wants it down low. He's working on Williams and walked. Change pivot feet. He established the left. Switch to the right. And there you see the foul trouble. You can add Williams, and that's what we're doing right now. He has three. We're up to date on everything. Foul underneath, and that's going to be against 34 of Cincinnati, Bobby Brannon. And for Brannon, that gives him three fouls. Team seventh. 
and so Xavier will go to the line. And there is Danny Fortson who has been on the bench for several minutes with three fouls. Eight minutes left in the ball game, and Bob Huggins has not called Fortson back in yet. James Posey had a very good first half, and that is his first point of the second half. Posey had 20 in the opening game win over Western Kentucky. And now give him nine. And Xavier only down by four with 819 left. And UC has to spend a timeout. Couldn't get the ball in. And that's the second time Charles Williams is the inbound man against full court pressure. Has had to burn a timeout. Once in the first half, once here in the second. Danny Fortson is going to check back in for Cincinnati. So he has two fouls left with eight minutes and 19 seconds to go. And Bob Huggins has to be thrilled that he could pull Fortson out with three, keep him on the bench for, I would guess, about five or six minutes, and have his team actually increase the lead as opposed to fall behind. You know, it's such a cliche when you say uh, throw out the records when these two teams get together. But I don't think anything could be closer to the truth. There were many years there under Pete Gillen where Xavier had far superior talent, but Cincinnati would battle and battle and battle and find a way to hang in there. And that has been the story here tonight, although I think these are the best these two teams have been in the last number of years squaring off against one another. Flint taking it to the hole, dishes to Patterson. Offensive foul before the basket against Damon Flint. And T.J. Johnson drew it. Give him credit. He's out there with four fouls. He kind of lost it emotionally earlier this half, but in a key situation, he steps up and draws the charge from Damon Flynn. Well, you can't leave your feet. Flynn ought to know better. Cats have eight team fouls. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good to see briefly in that quick shot of TJ Johnson's face how composed he looks at this point after losing it emotionally earlier this half. Mm -hmm. It was really surprising the way he lost it at one point, but eventually the experience that he has built, the coaching that he has received over the past two and a half years, is sinking in. Now Skip Prosser asked the same question we are. What is this? What are we waiting around for? Took him forever to realize that Cincinnati had 18 fouls, which means, of course, Xavier will shoot the one and one for the remainder of the half until they get to 10. And Johnson hits a free throw. Darnell Burton back in for the Bearcats. Reuben Patterson will sit. Patterson had nine in the first half. He has 13 now in the game. And X is only down by three. Cincinnati won last year by nine, but it was a nail biter until the last minute. Johnson hit them both. So the lead is down to two, and X continues to pressure. Williams telling everybody to get the heck out of the way. And here comes the trap. He's in trouble. You see, is barely able to break it. Fortson will pull up. 14 for Danny Fortson. And you're right when you say barely. The shot clock was down to 25, but Lumpkin answers. I was just going to say the officials, as we noted in the previous game, count with the arm. They don't look at the clock. If they did, Cincinnati might have lost the ball. Lumpkin, his third three of the game. Lenny Brown has three three-pointers. Six of 14 is X from behind the arc. Cincinnati just one of eight. Cincinnati handling the pressure much better here in the second half. Flint lays it down. Not only getting the ball up court, but getting easy shots, which they had not been doing all game. 
Cincinnati 56, Xavier 53, and a foul underneath. Williams able to deny the wide open layup. Foul number three on Charles Williams, but a good one. Darnell Williams is about to dunk. At least he'll have to earn the free throws instead of having the easy two. Well, Patterson going to come back in now, replacing Damon Flynn. Rough night for Damon Flynn. He has 10 points, but he is three of eight from the field and has committed three turnovers. Darnell Williams, a quiet game. He averaged 12 per contest a season ago. Had 15 in the opening game win against Western Kentucky. And as we brought up earlier, 24 big ones against Cincinnati in the Crosstown shootout last year. Good looking player. Mm -hmm. Set a school record with 35 points in one game as a freshman. And look at the arc on his free throws. He really puts it up in the air. And that helps you get a soft bounce when it's a little bit off target, as you can see on that last free throw. Knocked out of bounds. Still UC ball. One point game with 7.14 left. I don't think uh, Patterson wants to handle the ball with Sherman Anderson in his face. Cincinnati beats the pressure, and boy, Sherwin Anderson is all over the floor. James Posey is also doing a nice job as the front man in that full court press. At 6'7", his long arms create a problem. Monroe can't get the roll. They battle for the rebound. Fortson had it, knocked it out of bounds, and he said he was fouled. He got no call. Fortson risking picking up his fourth foul with his pursuit of that loose ball. Boy, all over Fortson's back was Williams. Monroe able to knock it out of bounds. Xavier a chance to take the lead with 6.32 left. And Brandon will come off the UC bench and replace Roderick Monroe. T.J. Johnson really working for position against Fortson, and look at Williams. And the foul will be against Lumpkin, and that is his fourth personal foul. They Charles. cannot lose him, Danny. Oh, absolutely. Of all the players that have picked up four, losing Lumpkin would definitely hurt Xavier. I was just going to say, Charles Williams has been the most impressive Cincinnati player on the floor in the second half. He's been able to break the press, although has come dangerously close a few times to not getting it past midcourt in 10 seconds. He's made some good feeds and has even provided a little offense, and that is the unknown factor with Williams. Brown replaces Lumpkin as Williams gets a free throw. Five of seven from the line tonight. Williams starting at point guard tonight in place of Damon Flint from the opener and Keith Legree from last season. I think this game will finally maybe allow people to appreciate what the Bearcats lost when Keith Legree finished his eligibility last year. About 31 steady minutes a game. Wasn't flashy, but got the Bearcats into the right spots. And the final eight. Cincinnati leads by three. Off the screen, Brown, defended well by Burton. Shot clock at 12. And Fortson fouls from behind, and that's number four on the junior out of Pittsburgh. Definitely some contact there, but not a foul that has been called throughout this game. You see him reach around, that's a foul. But when it isn't called until six minutes and one second are left in the game, and you can't help but be a bit frustrated if you're Bob Huggins or Danny Fortson. Well, I think that you bring up a great point. I think down at the other end, the play we saw a moment ago, he had not one Xavier player, but two over his back. 
And then at the other end, he commits it and gets whistled for it. Xavier deserves credit, though, for isolating Fortson defensively, guarding T.J. Johnson, and then trying to get the ball to T.J. That's how you get people out of the game. Mm -hmm. And Johnson has played very well after that blow-up, as you pointed yes, out, has. Dan, and has been able to keep his composure and stay in the game. He, too, has four fouls. And yet has not stopped being aggressive. Johnson breaks the pressure. May have walked. Patterson, finger roll, tipped in by Monroe. The lead is three, 5.45 to go at the shoot. Monroe covering Johnson, giving up about three inches in Cincinnati's man-to-man -man defense. Anderson dribble penetration and was bumped by Bobby Brennan. And for Brennan, that's number four. Brandon with four, Fordson with four. Jackson Jolson has not played since the three minute and 40 second mark of the first half. If Brandon picks up a fifth, it'd be interesting to see if Jackson comes back in after such a long time on the pine. Sherwin Anderson, 63% from the line a season ago. One of the Xavier tri captains and Brick City. Anderson does not get the ball up above his eyes. You can see he kind of shoots it down from around the chin. You don't see too many good free throw shooters with that form. Doesn't get the elbow in line. Doesn't allow you to get the proper spin. And as you noted, Sean Anderson only makes about six of ten. Burton to the bench, just five points in the game for Darnell. Anderson missed them both, tries to save it, and right at Flint. A couple of big misses there by Anderson. And he's a senior out of Brooklyn, New York. 5-10 to go. Flint to the bucket, dumps it to Brandon underneath. Head fake, and then hammered from behind by Williams. And now Darnell Williams has four. And the bad thing from Williams' perspective there was that he was in perfect position to stuff Bobby Brandon and take the ball away. Watch where he is. Brandon goes with a head fake. Williams is waiting right behind him to make a play, but tries to basically take a huge arm swing and knock it 20 rows back into the crowd instead of go up with two hands and rip the ball out of Brandon's. Braggs and Lumpkin replace Anderson and Williams in the Xavier lineup. See the numbers on Brandon. Yep, the numbers don't look all that great, but he has done a nice job in the second half. He may have hit the biggest shot of the night, given UC a lead. When they could do nothing offensively, hit that 17-foot jumper. In his first two crosstown shootouts, he did not score. So it's nice for a hometown kid to have a nice game against X. Miss the second free throw, four-point spread, five minutes to go. Brown in traffic. Not there, out of bounds, Xavier Ball. Break for Xavier because that was a force by Lenny Brown. He's trying to argue that he got hacked, but he was a bit out of control as he went up for that shot against bigger players. Well, they left Brown alone. Nobody found him on the inbound pass, and he drills him for three. His fourth three-pointer of the night. And no force there. As you said, Cincinnati did not pick him up at all on the inbound play. The lead is down to one. Cincinnati, 61. Xavier, 64. 35 left from the shoe. Boy, every possession so important right now. Shot clock at 10. Williams pitches out to Patterson. That's not his shot. And Cincinnati has done nothing from beyond the arc tonight. One three-pointer in nine tries, while Xavier has hit seven out of 15. And X with a chance to take the lead at the four-minute mark. Shot clock at six. And they leave Brown alone again. 
and they get away with a break. Posey the rebound just threw it up. Tipped in by Braggs. And Xavier has the lead with 335 left. Xavier doing what Cincinnati is known for, getting second and third shots. First it was Posey with one offensive rebound and then Braggs with a tip. And the Xavier Musketeers fell behind by six. Looked like they were in trouble. But all of a sudden, a couple of big baskets won by Brown in the tip in a moment ago by Torre Braggs. And they have a one point lead with 331 left to go. And here's a surprising stat for you Xavier has more offensive rebounds than Cincinnati. That was a huge key to the wide margin in Cincinnati's opener. The Bearcats consistently able to crash the offensive glass against Western Carolina. But Xavier with 12 offensive boards in this game, leading to uh, 11 second chance points. And the Muskies with one of those third chance buckets, as it turned out, is pulled ahead by one. And Bob Huggins' team now down by one will send their All-American Danny Fortson back into the lineup. Darnell Burton also checks back in. Xavier, 7 of 16 from three-point range. The Bearcats have hit one three-pointer the entire night. And right now, that's the difference. Fortson playing with four. We'll see how aggressive he is in establishing position. Burton for three! Only the second three-pointer of the game for Cincinnati. Brown, not there. But Posey chases down the rebound. Braggs, in and out, tipped it again, not there. Posey the rebound, and he still has the basketball, and now he is fouled by Williams. Boy, Xavier, you got to give him credit. Hustling after every single shot. And for Charles Williams, that is his fourth. Three more offensive rebounds for Xavier. Posey at 6-7. Getting one. Braggs with that tip. 15 offensive boards compared to 10 for UC. And there's the three-pointer by the gunslinger, Darnell Burton. Cincinnati has not had that as much of a weapon in this ball game, but... The two that have been connected on have been hit by Darnell Burton. Williams will stay in the game. Damon Flint checks back in for the Bearcats. And Posey at the line. That ain't going to do it. Two forty-seven to go, and Cincinnati leads X by two. Posey a second try at the strike. got it so we will take a break in the action 247 left the crosstown shootout is a one point cincinnati lead what a game dan horde 64 63 bearcats and still 247 left i tell you what for folks that prefer the NBA over college basketball, oh. I throw this game at you. Uh, you don't have NBA action like this until the playoffs, and this is the second game of the season. Well, Cincinnati with the basketball. And our forward game summary, you see the three-point shooting difference. Xavier with seven, Cincinnati with two. Fortson, 14 points, eight rebounds. Been a quiet night for Danny. No rebounds in the second half. Not a good screen there by Brandon. They're looking for Fortson, working on Johnson. A couple of spin moves, pulls up, and defended beautifully by Johnson, and a big bucket by Fortson. But Johnson was somewhat limited in what he wanted to do there. He stood strong, got good position, but did not jump with Fortson, fearing picking up his fifth and final foul, and Danny was able to elevate and hit the shot. Two minutes to go. Cincinnati leads by three. Johnson spin move. Can't get it to fall. And are they saying a foul? Yes, they are. And that'll 
go against Posey. Oh, one of the few Musketeers not in foul trouble tonight. That's his second. And Fortson will walk to the other end of the floor. In a one and one situation, that's team foul number nine. Posey has been impressive tonight. He brings a lot of energy to the Muskies. Not necessarily a wise move there to try to reach in on Danny Fortson, but I'll tell you what, he makes things happen. Skip Prosser, after the opening game, said that he brings our team joie de vivre. Yeah. Using a little French, basically love of life or energy for a poor definition of that, but that's essentially what Skip meant, and we've seen it tonight out of Posey. What was that again? Joie de vivre. Yeah. You learn a little something every day. I may <laughs> use that later on. Fortson again at the line. Couldn't get the second one. Brandon a big rebound. And he'll go up left hand and reject it. By but Torrey Braggs. With hostility. 145 to go. Cincinnati leads by four. They sniff a chance to hit a big one right here. Shot clock down to 15. You got a feeling it's either Burton or Fortson. Shot clock now down to 10. And it's Fortson. Having trouble finding a handle, and he was fouled as he went up. Wow, that's big. That is big. Number five on Braggs. He is fouled out of the game. Cincinnati getting the ball to Fortson with less than 10 on the shot clock. Xavier electing to double down on him, and Danny could not get off a good shot, but Braggs got whistled with his fifth. Well, I tell you, Torrey Bragg, for a young man playing in his first crosstown shootout, 10 points, three rebounds, was in foul trouble through a lot of the game. He showed quite nicely for himself in this one, and Fortson continues to miss huge free throws. He is now three of eight from the line. Braggs has another year left in this crosstown shootout. A late bloomer didn't start till he was a senior in high school and quite a pickup by Skip Prosser and the Muskies. And Fortson connects. Five point Cincinnati lead, 125 to go from a shoe. Lumpkin left alone for three in and out. Johnson a big rebound and puts it home. And X calls timeout. Stopping the clock with 117 left. And Bob Huggins all over his junior All-American Danny Fortson allowing T.J. Johnson to get that rebound. And the offensive boards continue to mount, amount rather for the Muskies. 16 offensive rebounds. I don't recall seeing that against the Cincinnati team in a long time. Fortson did not do much of a job of boxing there. TJ got position, and then Danny with four was helpless. He wasn't going to pick up his fifth once TJ had that offensive board. Both teams are out of 20-second timeouts. Xavier has one full timeout remaining. Bob Huggins has a couple left. We invite you to stay tuned for the 10 o'clock news with Jack and Gina immediately following the game. And, of course, we'll have... The entire story from here at the shoe with Greg Horde and Dan Horde. And thank God, no relation. <laughs> 1 14 left. And Williams in trouble. Now Cincinnati has one timeout remaining. And only two seconds he had left to get it across the other side. Bob Huggins just walked out to official Larry Lembo and said, where is the ball? He wants to diagram something that will allow Cincinnati to get it past midcourt quickly. 108 left. It's Cincinnati 68, Xavier 65. The final minute eight, leading Crosstown rival Xavier by three. You see with the ball and one timeout left. Xavier. Also a timeout left. Both teams you see in the double bonus. Williams crosses a timeline, but Cincinnati only 17 seconds left on the shot clock. And again, it looks like isolation time for either Burton or Fortson. Shot clock now down to 10. And Burton has it. Shot clock at three. Flint's going to have to fire from long range. Too strong. Oh, number five. Foul against Fortson. He's through. 
chasing an offensive rebound, and Danny is done with 41 seconds left. You know, I gotta really wonder, Dan, when you're up by three with 41 seconds left, why in the world you're going into your offense with nine seconds left on the shot clock? Cincinnati was somewhat fortunate to get a good look. Flint got off an open three, but Damon has been ice cold tonight, and then Danny trying to chase down the offensive board. Is out of the game with five fouls. He fouled out of four games last season, and this is the first time this year that he is done. Well, you remember last year, uh, it was either Fortson or Art Long. They rarely ever had a chance to spend much time on the floor together. And Fortson will be replaced by the missing man in the second half, Jackson Jolson. Jackson only has two fouls. He got them in the first three minutes and 40 seconds of the game and has not played since. And I got to believe, Dan, if you're Xavier, if Jackson Jolson touches the ball, he's the first man you're fouling. Except that he is probably the best free right. throw shooter on the team. Even ice cold, he's a great free throw shooter. Posey at the line will shoot two. Able to roll it in. And the lead is down to two. Posey is hit on four of seven from the strike, trying to bring Xavier to within a point with 41 ticks left. And since the shot clock in college hoops is at 35, Cincinnati cannot run out the clock. And Xavier has spent its final timeout of the game. If Cincinnati tried to take as much time off the clock as possible and succeeded at that, Xavier would still have plenty of time to get off a final shot. So Cincinnati has to try and come up with something to get a good look at the hoop. So Xavier out of timeouts. Cincinnati one timeout. 41.4 remains. And Xavier trying to, well, certainly not. We heard the term quoted earlier David versus Goliath I don't think it's exactly that in this year's edition of the Crosstown shootout because Xavier has outstanding talent and I think Skip Prosser would tell you the same thing although it's probably worth pointing out that David did win that matchup <laughs> yes he did and if Skip has a rock and a slingshot play available with 41 seconds left it might be a good time to pull it out well I think they just uh, fired one slingshot and had a rock that made a connection by getting Fortson out of the game. Absolutely. Granted, 41 seconds remain, but if you think about UC offensively here now, it certainly dramatically drops the options they have to go to on this time down the floor. And if it goes to overtime, you might be playing without your All-American. But. We have 41 seconds left before that comes around. And X will go with full court pressure. Posey leads the way from the front of the press. Long arms at 6'7". He creates problems. And Burton is fouled. Darnell will go to the line. And Darnell Williams is just fouled out of the game. So Fortson goes. He was a big scorer in last year's win for Cincinnati. Williams had the big game last season. Only four points tonight, and Darnell is finished. And as great a long-range shooter as he is, he is not a great free-throw shooter. He made 67% last year. He has not attempted one so far tonight. He was two for two in the season opener. Well, this is when you find out, in a lot of ways, what your team is made of. And Burton is a senior. Flint and Burton, the Cincinnati backcourt, they played here four years and played regularly for four years. Two shot situation for Burton, not a one and one. Got the first one. That's really not that bad a foul by Xavier. Even if Burton hits them both, X could tie the game with a three and will have plenty of time to set up for a good shot. Too strong on the second, so now Xavier with a two can tie, with a three can take the lead. 32 seconds left, and they're going to hold for one shot. Will they go for the three to win it? Well, they I... cannot completely run out the clock. Yeah, three, four-second time differential. Brown off the screen. Shot clock down to 12. And now Lumpkin with a shot clock at nine, working on Charles Williams. 
He walked and throws it up. Missed the shot out of bounds to X. And now X can go for the final shot. A two to tie or a three to win with seven seconds left. Seven point four seconds left. Xavier does not have any timeouts. Quick inbounds, and it's good by Posey. And the tuck clock is stopped at six point seven seconds left. And Xavier leads, or rather, Xavier has tied the game at sixty-nine. James Posey has had a big game, 14 points, 11 boards, and in his second game at X, comes up with a tying bucket with 6.7 seconds to go. Now Skip Prosser has to decide full court press and run the risk of Cincinnati getting an easy shot or back it up a little bit. There's the inbound pass from Williams and a very poor job by Rod Monroe of allowing Posey to get an easy inbound pass and a short bank shot. All right. What do you think now? Is Burton the obvious choice coming back the other way? Difficult to tell if Cincinnati will even have that choice. If Xavier applies full court pressure, in many cases, you really lose the ability to pick who you want to shoot because you're spending so much time and energy just getting the ball up court. If X backs it up a little bit and allows Cincinnati to dictate who's going to shoot, I would definitely guess Darnell Burton. Well, this has been a terrific game. Not necessarily in terms of style points, because neither team's going to send this one off to Cooperstown. Of course, Next. the Baseball Hall of Fame wouldn't be interested. <laughs> They're not going to send it to Springfield, Massachusetts. X is showing press with players in Cincinnati's backcourt. Keep in mind, Cincinnati has no timeouts left. And in this game, Cincinnati has twice had to call timeout while having difficulty getting the ball in. They can they cannot do that here. Williams takes the inbound and lost the ball out of bounds. Plenty of time for Xavier. And now Roderick Monroe will check back in. Xavier a chance to win the game with 5.4 seconds left. Charles Williams who had had an excellent second half with an unnecessary and unforced Turnover on the bad dribble. Brown takes the inbounds, working on Burton. Brown, dribble penetration, pulls up. Xavier wins the game. Musketeers 71 69 the final wow what a finish Lenny Brown who hit a game-winning shot very much like that last year at the gardens against LaSalle took the ball one-on-one -on -one and made it happen to win the game for the Muskies Cincinnati giving up a lead in the last minute unable to hit two free throws Burton could only hit one of two then the turnover by Charles Williams and the Muskies take advantage. First, a great inbounds pass from Anderson to Posey for the easy bank shot. And then Lenny Brown going one-on-one -on -one to win the game. And the ex-faithful fired up, as you certainly would imagine, coming in here to the Shoemaker Center. And let's take a look again at the final shot by the sophomore Lenny Brown. Look at the reaction by the Muskies. They deserve it. After coming so close last year against top-ranked Massachusetts in a game that finished almost the exact opposite way this one did. Xavier led by four with a minute to go and had the ball, could not hold on as UMass hit a three-pointer down the stretch to force overtime. In this game, it was Cincinnati making the critical mistakes down the stretch and the young Musketeers capitalizing to knock off number one. And young Musketeers is indeed right. Came into the game tonight. Johnson, a junior, the only uh, starter that had played in this.
this building. Williams, along with Brown and Lumpkin, the terrific sophomore trio, and Braggs, the junior college transfer. Posey had a big game yes, tonight. He did. Yes, he did. On both ends of the court, he finished in double figures in points and rebounds. 14 points, 11 boards. And he was a guy who really led that charge on the offensive glass for X tonight. Xavier winning the battle of the offensive boards, pulling down 17 to only 12 for Cincinnati. I doubt we'll have many games this year where Cincinnati is out-rebounded on the offensive glass, but Xavier did it to uh, the Bearcats big time tonight, and that was certainly a, a pivotal factor in Xavier winning this game by two. Well, the Bearcats will have to look ahead to the Rutgers game on Saturday night, and our Dodge player of the game tonight, although he was in a lot of foul trouble, ended up foul. Goes over to the Xavier Musketeers with only 5.4 seconds to go. There you see Xavier working the ball. Lenny Brown moves in about 16 feet away. He hits it, nothing but net, and this is the aftermath on the court of a stunned Shoemaker Center as Xavier wins this one, 71-69. One of the guys playing a major part in this upset is James Posey, who is in his very first one. You hit a foul shot to get the Musketeers closer. Then you hit a little lay-in to tie the game up very late in the game. You guys didn't seem to be bothered by the crowd noise or the pressure. Uh, no. We knew it would be a tough place to uh, play in. We just want to uh, stay focused and work together and get a victory. When you saw Lenny get the ball, what did you think? Did you think he, that shot belonged to him? Oh, yes. Lenny, he's an excellent one-on-one -on -one player, and so it was only limited time, and he just made the, the right move and got the shot off. When it went through, how, how fast was your heart beating? Uh, I don't think my heart was beating. It stopped for a second. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, and I just went into frenzy. Congratulations on the big victory, and uh, we'll be talking with more of the Musketeers and also the Bearcats in just a minute. DJ, back to you. Thank you very much, John. Thanks you very much, Jim Posey. Quite a night at the